various emails. We even had a YouTube video that we produced in order to send it out to everyone so they could have an idea of what it really meant. Right before. Um, we acquired and distributed supplies. That was not an easy task working with our purchasing. Um, things were just not out of stock. They were on ships. They weren't available, things like that. Uh, from chemicals to spray bottles to cloths to PPE. Um, everything was in short supply, but we were able to find and scrounge and, and make it so safe for our students to return as quickly as we could. Uh, staffing, uh, labor for the custodial, uh, as you can imagine, uh, skyrocketed. Staying fully staffed was uh, quite an accomplishment. We weren't able to do it the entire year. Uh, we were able to use some temporary labor agencies to keep us as staffed as we could. Um, for the most part, a lot of our staff um, have really been there and, and really stepped up to keep our campus clean and safe. Summer 2021, so some things that we'll be looking forward to as we go through the year. Uh, Lynn Soto, believe it or not, has reached two years. Uh, we have a two-year warranty on that project, so we go through and do a commission for the, the buildings to make sure that everything is still operating correctly, any defects that we can find, anything that we take care of during the warranty period, um, very important. Uh, yearly flooring replacements throughout the district. Some of that's already started. We've been grateful to be able to get in and replace some classrooms uh, before summer. Uh, walking cooler and freezer equipment is going to be replaced at Barbara Roby Green and Summit Wigwam Creek. Uh, I mentioned that because it is quite a, an undertaking, especially inside those kitchens, that will remain operating during the summer as they feed students in the summer eating program. White Tanks Learning Center will go through permitting, uh, final uh, design. And uh, more of a focus, because we don't have quite as many large projects, a uh, bigger focus for our existing campuses. We don't want to leave those out, even when we're building full campuses. But remember, we still got 14, 15, 16 other campuses that we want to make sure we continue to take care of and give them as much priority as we can give them. Some standard projects that we complete every summer. Um, we strip and recoat a lot of our hard surfaces. Uh, carpet extraction, that's a shampooing process. Top and bottom, inside and out, campus cleaning by the custodial staff. Fire alarm testing, well, uh, everyone's away. Test alarm, test, alarm, test control, annual services. We go through and spray all of our campuses once a year. Um, staff moves, we have a lot of staff that move from campus to campus or within the campus we take care of. Um, use facilities never stops. During the summer, we still have uh, sports programs, HOAs that come, churches come to use our buildings. We're there to make sure that they're operating in the community. Summer school, summer camp, district trainings, 12 month staff, area cleaning. Uh, campuses don't really go dormant during the summer. They, they stay very active. And our facility staff annual training once a year. Uh, we started about four or five years ago. We do an annual training for all of our facility staff to come in and have everybody together. One for camaraderie and two to make sure that we're all on a standard cleaning procedure. We're all doing it the same way, no matter what campus you're in. Every year, I'd like to give you a little bit of an update on our school facilities board uh, building renewal grants, uh, mostly because it is uh, such a large number. It um, continues to go up every single year. Um, right now, on running total, we're just over $3 million since 2015 that we've been able to apply and receive grants. These are grants um, otherwise would have been spent through our capital funds within the district. We can now use those capital funds to replace carpet, playgrounds, things like that, rather than replacing air conditioners, roofs, um, some of those things. A uh, little bit of a breakdown for these uh, grants. This past year, we replaced 23 um, air conditioning projects Six air conditioners at Dorado, Middle, five at Dreaming Summit, Wigmont Creek, three at Corte Sierra, two at Rancho Santa Fe and Scott Holby, one at Litchfield Elementary, one at El Thomas Heck, and one cooling tower at Western Scott. So you kind of get a little idea of where our campuses are and how things are breaking down or uh, needing to be replaced. Uh, this past year, uh, Dorado Middle School seems to have won that uh, race. <laughs> We had one fire alarm project at Barbara Oakley Elementary School where we replaced the entire fire alarm system. We were building a renewal grant uh, paid for by this, uh, the state. 
Since 2015, the district's been awarded $3.15 million, 75 HVAC projects, two fire alarm projects, three roofing projects, and one weatherization project. It's tainted, but it's a weatherization project. So we're down to explain how those manage it. If you have any questions about facilities and what we're Thank you, Tim. Did, Jeremy, a question? Yeah, on Verano, six air conditioners, Verano Middle School, was that was that like the evaporator leaks that all the air conditioners did then? Mostly um, what we have is compressors that go down. Oh, really? Uh, they ground yeah. out, they fail. And because the units are a certain age, the building real grant fund um, will replace any unit right now for their, the statute is anything 15 years or older. If it's a major component, they just replace the entire unit. Yeah, no, I don't understand 15, that. We just replace and repair. A lot of this is uh, we're changing from R22 to the new. Yeah. Uh, air, uh, that kind of stuff. That's why you're seeing Grotto Middle School. But still, they shouldn't have failed. That's kind of short time. I uh, believe those are uh, 2004, so 17 yeah. years old. And they're yeah. they're used pretty heavily. Uh, they're all 510 units, mostly on our yeah. on our classrooms. They run pretty hard, but those those students put out a lot of heat. Uh, each each student inside of the classroom is equivalent to about 150 watt light bulb. Mm -hmm. That's how much heat that they put out. Multiply that by 20 or 25, and in the middle school setting, more than that, we're trying to keep that cool and and conditioned. So it is it's quite a bit, but they are starting to age. Sure, go ahead, Kim. Um, I don't have a question, but I just want to give you and your team, but I know you personally um, are responsible for the applications to the school facilities board and being very involved in that process. And for those who are not aware, the $3.1 million in grants awarded since 2015 were generally not awarded in the years prior to that. And as Mr. Ensign stated, this has freed up $3.1 million of our own capital funds that we could use for other projects. So it's been extremely helpful in helping us to maintain our buildings and our facilities. And, and kudos to you, Dan, for your hard work and learning the process and getting us these awards. Thank you. I will echo that as well. We, we, we have said uh, for many, many a month and probably years now that you are the SFE whisperer um, if there is to be one. So thank you for your hard work. I know that it is not easy to um, be front and center with them all of the time when you're needed here 24 seven. So how you're in two places at once, I'm not sure, but I appreciate the effort in you doing that. Um, also wanna pass along a sincere thank you to your custodial staff, your facility staff. Um, the last 12 months has been probably as hard on them as anyone in this district. So um, I know it's been hard to keep going in a 24 seven pace in a world where, um, you know, it's, it's been virtual and um, quarantine and that kind of thing. So thank you very much um, from me personally and from the board for all of the work that your team has done. It's very important. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Well, thank you for the update, Dan. We appreciate yeah. it. Good job. Thank you. Okay, for those of you following along on the agenda, we are moving on to um, item 1C, which is the Governing Board Equity Statement. Um, so before we get started in our next discussion, um, I wanna let you know we're gonna do things a little differently this evening, but before we jump in and introduce our guests that are here, um, I just wanna make a few comments kind of on the coattails of Superintendent Gunning earlier. Um, so to our community members that are here tonight, thank you for those that are watching at home. Um, thank you for continuing to engage with us. Um, to provide uh, feedback and you know, continue to have that open dialogue with other community members as we you know, move through this equity work. Um, this evening will be a bit different, like I said. Um, we won't have public comment, but you will be able to make a public comment at our next regular governing board meeting, which will be May the 11th. So I invite you to come back at that point if you'd like to say something specifically to the governing board. Um, as Superintendent Gunning mentioned, this evening will be a working session of the board. Um, and its, it's purpose is so that we can discuss and collaborate with each other. Um, and while we appreciate your cooperation, um, we want to maintain a safe and peaceful environment. So we encourage all of you to just um, sit and listen and collect your thoughts and come back at a later time and provide public comment to us if you wish to. 
to my fellow board members, um, thank you for showing up prepared and ready to work. Um, I encourage all of us to respect one another, show each other dignity and grace through this process. Um, that's what this job requires and that's what this job demands. So um, we need to do it both to each other and to the community that are here. So I encourage us all to make that commitment tonight. Um, and like I said, we are going to um, have a little different format this evening and Superintendent Gunny and I um, decided to bring in a group of facilitators to help the board um, begin to have these very difficult discussions. Um, we need to maintain our, um, our governing board norms and our policies and our procedures. And we thought best to bring people in that specialize in this, um, in this type of work to help us do that. Um, what we need to do is to make progress. And in order to do that, um, I think we need to take a step back and examine where, where we're going. Um, and this is, this is how we've decided to do it this evening. Um, so I'm going to take the opportunity to introduce our guests here tonight. Um, we have Colleen Conley and Amanda Kay, and they are from CK Synergy. Um, and their group uses a consensus-based model to facilitate highly effective meetings that engage and empower their participants. Um, their focus is on coalition building, staff and board development, and conflict management. So welcome to Amanda and Colleen. Thank you for being here. They're going to have to be on the microphone. Oh, there we go. All right. Is that better? Okay. So third time's a charm, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amanda Kay. This is Colleen Conley. We are here because we specialize in having hard conversations. We are not content level experts. Rather, we're here to help build a working relationship so that regardless of what the content is that we are discussing as a room, we can get through that conversation in a productive and respectful manner. So that is what we are here today to help work through. First, though, we want to start with introductions because we don't know all of you. So we'd love to hear your name, your title, and then in 15 words or less, what motivated you to join the governing school board? Should we just start here with Dr. Tara Armstead? Go around, no? Should we start here with Melissa? Zudima? Zydema. It's like, Zydema, okay. It's like guide only with a Z. Aha, uh -huh. so, Zydema. Um, so my name is Melissa Zydema. I am a governing board member and I you should have told me we were going to have this assignment. Um, <laughs> I was motivated to join the board because I wanted to have a voice in what was happening in our district. Thank you. My name is Danielle Clymer. I am the president of the governing board here at Litchfield. And um, Picking me in 15 words or less is very hard for those of you that know me. Um, I, will keep it, I will keep it very quick. Um, my initial motivation to join the governing board was to um, educate myself and be more involved in my children's education. Jeremy Honak. I started on January 1st or sometime in January. Welcome. And low achievement scores 
almost half the kids are not proficient at reading and or math. And also polls show that kids think socialism is cool. Thank you for joining us. Jody, I know you are not on the school board, <laughs> but perhaps you can share with us what motivated yes. you to become a superintendent. So good evening, I'm Jody Gunning. Um, I am the superintendent, this is my fourth year. Joined the district over 18 years ago and it, it all surrounded the passion for children and doing whatever I can to help them to succeed. Thank you. Did I steal your mic? Okay, I think that's working now. I'm Kimberly Moran and I am a governing board member and I joined the governing board because years ago I started volunteering in the district, helping with bond and override campaigns. And I said at that point in time, that that would be the most impactful uh, way that I could impact the community because in volunteering those hours, we raise millions of dollars for our schools. And this is very similar to me. The time that I give to this impacts thousands of students. And for me, that makes all of the time and effort um, well worth it. Thank you. I'm Dr. Armstead. Um, I just became a board member in March, Welcome. so not too long ago. My motivation um, was to just take the advocacy that I was doing in the classroom on a bigger level. Thank you. All right, we have some really great motivations um, and there's a lot of alignment in our motivations. Let's take a look at um, the strategic plan that you all have at the beginning of your packet, I believe. Let's take a look and just refresh ourselves on the mission because there's some alignment with our mission and what we believe with what was just shared. So the mission is to connect, educate, empower our LSD family and community. And what we believe is in academic excellence, well-being, teacher quality, people first, preparedness for life, and communication. And I heard with what everyone was saying, whether we were talking about academic excellence, whether we were talking about funding, whether we were talking about advocacy, education, I heard a lot of what was in your mission and what we believe echoed in what you all said. So thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna turn it over to Colleen now. Colleen is gonna go ahead and walk us through our norms and how we're gonna go, uh, go about working together today. I'm gonna hand this up to you. So Amanda sort of walked us through why we're here and what we're trying to achieve as a district. And so one of the things that help us achieve those things is really the norms, how we work together. And I know that you all just recommitted to the norms at the last meeting. Uh, I think I saw that it was dated at the last meeting. So I want to give you a second right now to go ahead and look through them right, uh, right now. I'm going to give you about four or five minutes to read through those norms. Yeah. I believe it's the next to last page in your packet.
So I'm seeing faces. Uh, I think everybody's sort of had a chance to read through them. I wanna take the opportunity now to ask if there are any questions around the norms or if there's any clarification on any of the points that people wanted to discuss before we get started. Everybody feels like these cover the basis. Okay. And norms are, are really important, but what's really important about the norms is how we hold ourselves accountable to the norms. So one thing we like to ask um, as facilitators of a meeting, and then also for you guys to be able to use going forward is how do you want to be held accountable to the norms? You know, we can get into very impassioned conversations and sometimes we, we need little gentle reminders from either our fellow board members or from a facilitator. And we want to ask you how you want to be reminded. Some people like a quick verbal reminder back in the days before COVID. Some people wanted to be touched on the shoulder. Some people want to hold up something, you know. So I'm going to ask each of you individually. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. How you would want to be reminded if we start to veer off course. You already know. So when I became a board member, there was a lot of initiation in terms of open meeting law, understanding all of this. And I, I study things carefully and I studied that very carefully. And the first thing that I saw when I saw the governing board norms is I said, well, what if something in the norms here is limiting me from what are in what's in the United States Constitution and what is in the Arizona revised statutes, Title 15, Title 38. And, uh, and uh, I called up Chris Thomas at the ASBA and I kind of put him down and he said, well, uncle, you know, mm -hmm. Constitution trumps it, ARS trumps it and, you know, Third priority would be the governing norms. So um, that I think is the way to, that I definitely the way I look at it. Okay. And, and if we've, when we have problems with the other two, then we're, we haven't gotten to this yet. Okay, so I guess what I guess my question is, is there something in the norms and backing up? Cause I think we just talked about are we okay with the norms? And people were saying, yes. Is there something in the norms that you feel like is in competition with that? No, no, I don't. I mean, it's in competition depending on the actions of, you know, what goes on in the world and what goes on with the board and whatever. So it's, it's, not, it's not a black and white one or the other. Okay. So I guess if I am here, just to kind of help me for the day, I'm new and I'm kind of learning how, how you want to be held accountable. I am reading the norms and I hear someone um, that is not being courteous, dignified, or fair to others. How would you want me to enforce that norm for the day? Because I don't feel like that's going to be in conflict with right. the United States con Constitution, for example. Well, um, I can give an example um, myself. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten lots of letters and I've gotten criticism on the board from various members when, in fact, they were violating the open meeting law and they were making up stuff and that it wasn't on the agenda when the law says that, um, you know, other matters in some reasonable way related to an item on the agenda. Uh -huh. Actually, you can't discuss anything without discussing things related to it, you know, otherwise you would just kind of repeat, you know, the little sure. word on it. So, I, I totally so I'm that. saying in that particular case, I'm sure everybody thinks that uh, I'm I'm rude. Nobody likes to hear stuff that that that, that goes against what they want to do. So, 
I know there's really there's no point so, in discussing. Yeah, we're this. not here to rehash what happened in the past. I'm not rehashing it. It's going to be coming up in this meeting here. Okay. Because there's a lot to discuss right here, and respectfully, it's great you're here, but we need to go respect. You know, we need to respect the time and whatever to get to what we need to discuss. And, and so I, that's that's my my priority here. And I totally agree with you. I also feel like if we can't agree on how we're going to work together, that we're not going to be able to get through any of that other work. Well, the 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 Title 15 is real clear. There's no there's no great mystery in it. And and Title 38 is very clear. There's no great mystery. And anybody can read. We're educators, we ought to be able to know how to read. And it's not there's no ambiguity in it. It's it's pretty easy. And so and we're we're not arguing the constitution. We're not part of the Okay. The question is going to be when we are all working together, how do we want to work together so that we can successfully move forward? So, what I'm hearing you say is that you'd like to be able to provide feedback uh, and have you accelerate uh, what people are trying to hear you and move forward with you. Well, like yes, and, so and, and, and I'm not here to, to go quibble, but like. First off, the governing board policy or what is what is called, yeah, the policies in the governing board, the operational goals says the governing board is responsible to the people and that it's supposed to represent the district. And, and, it, and it also says that um, it should encourage free expression of opinion by all board members. And honestly, I've been shut down at every meeting. Okay. Illegally, illegally, and, illegally. And we really appreciate that you feedback that you are aware. That's why it's on the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Make sure that everything runs smoothly. Okay. So if you do that, we yeah. not going to have an issue with blocking each other's handbook. We're simply asking you to be more in touch with how the privacy of being together in the future. We just want to build a common ground. Yeah. Well, I think we all agree. I think I've signed it three times since I started in January, and you know we're we're in agreement. So I don't know why. Does anybody disagree with it? Or? Well, we're okay. So, okay. You know, it, this yeah. is for our benefit. We want like take a minute to think about it that's totally fine it looks yeah. like you had something i am completely fine with a verbal just a quick reminder mm -hmm. okay. Fine. okay same for me okay verbal 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 and for you um i think verbally um reminding the other board members of of the board policy and ethics and the statutes so a quick verbal reminder. So, but I'll do it verbally. Yeah, no smoke signals or anything like that. You, we don't need to develop any fires to develop no, the smoke signals, signals no anything. pole horns, no. no. Right. <laughs> Some rubber bands and, and spitballs. I mean, it's school, you know. We could really go back to elementary school uh, with our paper paper football. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we'll do a verbal reminder. We'll just gently remind one, one another. I'd like to just gently remind you about the norms that we've already set, and that's how we'll agree to move forward. It will be a way to kindly remind one another, and then we can uh, we don't need to rehash or get to Does everyone feel good about that? Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. We're with the right one then. So uh, as you mentioned, we have a lot of work to do tonight. And what's on the agenda is the equity statement. 
we have a couple of questions and I know you all were asked to do some homework in advance of the meeting to think about the pros and cons of an equity statement. And so we have a couple of questions as we sort of start to think through that tonight. So if we as a board were to support an equity statement, what do you hope it will achieve? And then secondly, what are your concerns if we were to support an equity statement as a board? So kind of thinking in that, we, we talked about it in a pro-con language and also talking about it in sort of what are we hoping to achieve and what are our concerns? And in this, we're talking only about having an equity statement. We are not talking about the specific content in the equity statement at this point, more generally about having an equity statement. Does, does that make sense to everyone? So we heard from Here. I'm one of four in my family and I'm just used to, to shouting. I'm not used, used to using microphones. So we heard from all of you um, that at the last session um, that perhaps you felt like the governing board get, didn't get to give enough input to the equity statement. We also heard from other folks in the room that they felt like they did not get to give enough input to the equity statement. So for now, we are tabling the statement that is already written. And in fact, right now, we're just going to think about an equity statement in general, the merits of an equity statement, and do we want to move forward with one? So we're starting with a fresh slate here. Let's leave the past in the past, and let's just focus on moving forward. So the question that we're going to start with right now is... If we were to support an equity statement as a governing board, what do you hope it will achieve? We asked you to put together, like Colleen said, the pros cons list. So you can pull from your pros and cons list that you developed on your own to let us know what your input is here. We're gonna record it and we're gonna discuss it. We're gonna see where we have similarities about our hopes or the pro. Um, and we're gonna see where perhaps we differ. And then we'll move into what concerns we have, and we will do the same exercise. So let's first start with our hopes. Can we just jump in? Go. For okay, it. perfect. Um, one one of the pros for me was it creates a space for regular discussions at the district level to collaborate and to guide any equity efforts. Great. So it creates the space to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And. We won't be able to write down uh, your sentences as you say them. So we might echo back what we're hearing Paraphrase, in a very succinct sure. way, just to make sure we capture the sentiment of it. Mm -hmm. Kimberly, you turn that on? Yes. Yeah. Um, one of my pros is to define the direction of the district. Define the direction. Thank you. What's another hope? Jeremy or Melissa? Dr. Tara? I, I'll, I'll comment. Yeah, please do. Um, we, we, if we were to support an equity statement, there is no reason why we should. There's a million reasons why we shouldn't. And if the district can't raise achievement scores for white privileged students, then how can they raise them for other races? This is just a, there's no legitimate support for an equity statement. There's no legitimate reason why diversity and so-called equity helps academics or dis disciplinary disparities. On the other hand, it violates the constitution, Martin Luther King's dream of ending racism, the 64 Civil Rights Act, but I should not have to explain that to educators. Not one letter or speaker is given any legitimate reason why an equity statement is needed in a district that has no reported incident of racism in its entire history. Again, if the district can't raise the scores for white privileged students, how can they raise them for other races? On the other hand, we've had scores of letters in the public that have opposed it. They've cited facts, statistics. The opposition consists of overwhelming numbers of dignified mature adults exercising their right to participate in the democratic process. If the district cannot raise, raise them for white students, why do they raise them for others? There's, there's no significant correlation between race congruent teachers and any other equity pseudoscience. The supporters of the equity statement by and large have acted like children or criminals or both. Two of the speakers in support of the equity statement were involved in an assault on members so of the what, public. So what I'm hearing, 
Go ahead. So we're hearing that you think it's unnecessary and that it is not going to be much. There's no reason for it. It's a game. It's a hoax. It's something that a few people dreamed up and secretly implemented. And uh, and then when the public found out about it, everybody's okay. against and, it. So right now we're not looking backwards. We're starting fresh now. So we're not yeah, talking so, about the so statement that was no out there. There's no support for it. it we're starting. Be we're just abandoned. starting over. Abandoned. And so we're asking you if we, we are trying to feel out right now from the five of you if there is support for moving forward with any equity statement. We're not asking specific to the one in the past. We're not asking about any anything specific like that. There's support I'm for increasing say, academics. I'm there's hearing support you say for that hundred percent. And okay. this is a waste of time. Okay, I'm hearing you say that there's support to we, increase why academics. Are we doing this? So and, and we hear that that is your opinion, but we have to make sure that we're taking in every everyone's opinions so and and you know thank even you for letting me speak i'm yeah, good you don't we, need a lecture we appreciate it. it oh not thank a lecture you. at all we appreciate it but we have to go through the exercise to make sure that we bring everyone on board so we hear you saying that you want to raise academic achievement that that is your platform and that is what is most important to you do you want us to add that to the hope side or do you want us to just parking lot that for now and say that we'll talk more about academic achievement after what do you we mean go parking, through the equity. Parking lot. I don't know what you're saying. So the parking lot here is for us to talk uh, talk about subjects um, that are perhaps unrelated to what we're talking about right now. So if or you're like saying that you don't our want kids, educating students, okay, we'll put that oh, in the parking lot. Oh no, I think we're having a misunderstanding. So I think it's the purpose saying, of the school that's lost here. Sure. So I, I I think we're having a misunderstanding. I'm not saying that the two are not related but i'm hearing you say that that and correct me if i'm wrong that's why i'm that's why i'm echoing back to you correct me if i'm wrong i'm hearing you say that you want academic achievement but you want to achieve that separate from equity is that what you were saying equity is not academic achievement it's not okay. so the, your question so then, isn't making any sense so okay so then we can move so you're, you're, move you're trying to cram that. something in and do leading stuff and whatever it doesn't it doesn't work on okay, me so, then we'll, so go go you can go to try someone else okay so we have under your concerns that you think it's unnecessary that it's not getting us where we need to go so i after that but i'm I'd sorry like, i can't see what you're pointing at so under your concerns about having that you think it's unnecessary you think it's unnecessary and it's not getting us to work. Um, it's destructive. It's using resources. Okay. It doesn't work. It has it's pseudoscience. There's no nothing shows okay. that it works. Okay. It's something to hide the bad academic achievement of the district. Yeah. Okay. It's pretending. Okay. If we were to support one, what do you hope would happen? So on that, what do you think I'm gonna kind of move on to another person? So have another pro, which would be to encourage and support teachers and staff to adapt to specific student needs. Thank you. Adapt to student needs. Does anyone else have a hope? <clears throat> I would hope that this would create a safe space where kids feel they are loved and where they can learn. Safe space, love, learn. Thank you. What if I could just say all those are already being done. They're already part of it. There's nothing new. So okay. they're not reasons to add an equity statement. They're just simply. In your at, uh, right. So, uh, so, uh, well, no, I think factually, I mean, it, we're talking some facts here. I would say I mean, I two plus two equals four is not a, my opinion. It's it, a fact. But it is, it is, we asked about their hope for doing an equity statement. And so each board member has the right to kind of say what their hope would be for that. And so you're saying it's unnecessary. We have that. No, I'm say, I, I just said, you keep putting words in my mouth. I didn't say that at all. She said that what the things that everybody said there, and I, I simply said, those are already part of everything written down in the policy manual and the way the school works. That's all, I'm just stating a fact. It's, I'm not dis, I'm not dissing her opinion. It's, it's Jeremy, a great opinion. Jeremy, I would opinion. ask that you stop saying that whatever I say is an opinion and what you're saying is a fact. This is my feeling I, about this, just like you have yours. And, you, and I just respected your opinion if you just heard what I said. I'm just saying that what your opinion and what 
you, Colleen, wrote on the board is something that's already being done. Okay, well, we're gonna gather all of the things and come back and discuss them. Right now, we're just gathering the information. So, any, Dr. Armstead, do you have any hopes? Uh, my hope would be that it would bring clarity, transparency, and understanding to the community on what it is that is being done in the classroom as far as those unique needs of individual students. Thank you. Clarity, transparency, and understanding. Thank you. What else? What is another hope in each of your opinions? Oh, I have another hope, okay. Um, my other hope is that it would address disparities. Address disparities. I have one more. Um, to strongly communicate and articulate a message of inclusion from our governing board and our superintendent to the district and our community. Message of inclusion. Is it falling down? What else? What's another hope that we have? My hope is that it would it would make it known that differences aren't necessarily deficiencies within the district, that these differences just mean this is where we're gonna support the student even more. Deficiencies do not equal differences. I'm sorry, Tara, could you, I couldn't quite understand what you said. Deficiencies do not necessarily equal differences in our school. So just because someone's different doesn't mean it's a deficiency. To kind of add on to that, I would uh, even go so far as to say that differences would be celebrated versus so celebrate differences. Yeah. What else? Melissa, do you have another one? I hope that this equity statement shows that everyone is valued. Everyone is valued. Okay, thank you. Any others? Please. Um, my hope is that we ensure opportunity and access for all of our children. Ensure, one more time. Opportunity and access. Opportunity and access, thank you. Have we captured all of them at this time? I have one more. Yeah. Um, my hope would be that children would see themselves represented, whether that's through curriculum or their teacher or some, in some way throughout their K through eight education with us that they would see themselves represented. Great, children see themselves represented. I would hope that whatever happens that kids get the best education they don't need custom made math for their whatever it is. Of course, okay. we need to help kids that need more help. There's no question, we're already doing that. We're making every Great. accommodation. But <laughs> what we really need, the, the thing to really give kids to fairness, and I don't like the word equity because it means totally equal, but the thing that's gonna help every kid, no matter what the background, coming from is having a good understanding, strong math skills, strong reading skills. You need to okay. read well. You need to be able to logically think, solve problems. Great. You need to have some character. You need to have uh, um, a, a sense of, of, of morality, you know, where doing good and is, a, is, is a way that you get ahead is by doing good for others, things like that. And, and so much of the equity and all that is, is focusing on race and all these divisions and, and problems really where there are none. And little kids, they don't see race. Most kids we hear over and over that they, they, they don't. And, 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 and if they do hear it, they don't want to hear it. Okay, that everyone wants to be loved. Everybody wants to have a purpose in life. Everyone wants to um, uh, feel that they have some control over their life. And they, and they get that not by giving a participation trophy and make believe stuff, but by 
being able to look at, look at themselves and say, hey, with their flaws and with their disadvantages and whatever, they, they, they can feel good about themselves, that they're, they, they have a direction, they have a goal. And that, that's what, that's, it, it's that simple. So it's, that, it's that simple. If kids have great. that, all the rest will take care of itself. So I heard a direction and a goal. I heard you say a good education. That is a hope for you. Sorry, go ahead, Colleen. Kids had the best education was what I think I heard you say, that that was your hope and that was your goal. Yeah. Great. Depending on how you define education. I think I did a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. We have now developed our list of hopes. So if we support an equity statement as a school board, this is what we hope for. We hope that we create a space to collaborate and guide equity in discussion, define direction of the district, encourage to adapt to students' needs, create a safe space to love and learn, create clarity, transparency, understanding for all unique students. We address disparities. There's a message of inclusion. Differences are not equal to deficiencies. Differences are celebrated. Everyone is valued that we ensure opportunity and access for all students. Children see themselves represented and kids get the best, best education. Okay. Did we capture that all properly then? Okay. So now let's talk about what our concerns would be then. So we asked, like we said, for you to, con to create a pro cons list. So we'd like to hear what you are concerned about if we adopt an equity statement. I have one, please. Um, the perception that some students will be left out or left behind. Uh -huh. The perception that students will be left out or left behind. That's a real concern. We don't want anyone to feel that. Okay. What else? Um, I have a concern about the division that it seems to be bringing to our community. That it's bringing division to our community. Okay, thank you. That's a real concern. Um, I'm concerned about misinterpretation of the statement. Misinterpretation of the statement. Thank you, that's a good concern. Well, I, I kind of, I, I would amplify that misinterpretation. As a, as a board, what a lot of people don't realize is we have one employee. Mm -hmm. Meet Superintendent Gunner. Yes. Okay, so she runs the school district mm -hmm. and she implements, but we make the policies. So by having an, a statement that has, Colleen, could you just scoot one side to the other, that has statements such as differences celebrated and and uh, uh, all of these things that are just sort of platitudes with no meaning. The problem is now all of a sudden, we if we make it a policy, all of a sudden, Superintendent Gunning, maybe not herself, but everybody in there can go interpret a vague statement to mean whatever they want. And what happened, okay, we, you're saying we can't talk about the past. We have to talk about the past. Think all history. If you don't you know, acknowledge it, you repeat it. So what happened was an equity statement that looked kind of like rainbows and unicorns ended up being a, a procedure manual that you know, we heard a lot about, oh, the equity's not changed or whatever, but if you read the procedure manual, it, not, it, it, it said this committee would go run around and actually encourage teachers to modify, enhance, adapt, whatever they did, basically write a new curriculum if they decided they wanted so to. So you're concerned. Hold on a second now, I'm talking so, right now. So, so Hold on a second. So, I'm not so, violating any board norm, so encourage free expression so of opinion by board members. Can I, and I'm going to finish. No, I'm not. I'm going to finish. 
I'm going to finish right now I'm because according to the ARSs, I can talk. This. You are more than welcome to talk. About Thank course. you. I will. Then you could stop interrupting. But let's me. let's so for I'm just take a breather for one moment this, to make sure that we're all this, respecting one another. With this, let's just take a breather for thing. one moment to make sure no, we're, we're respecting not each other. No, we're not taking a breather. I'm talking right now. You take a breather. Right I, now, all I, I'm I saying is that I think perhaps we all need to take a breather. With this, because well, this is getting a breather. too. Everybody take a breather, and I'll talk. If I'm fine on talking, I got a lot of stamina. I then, believe you. When you, when you, <laughs> I don't, I don't question that about When you have a vague statement in a nutshell, it ends up to be something that it, you can't control yes. anymore. We hear what and you're so saying. And so to sit here lightly say, "Well, let's go back and forth and yes. massage this to come up concern. with an equity statement." No, it's we hear it's, your it's a disaster. That it, we hear your concern that it's, it's going to create a policy. Well, I don't know who's that will be misinterpreted. You keep talking over me. I hear your concern. I do. We need to make sure that when we're interacting with one another and talking with one another, that it's always in a respectful manner. I'm being very and, respectful. And, you're not, and you're sitting here and if, lecturing if it, me, and I'm it, sure you got am, paid I, to come over and I deal with me. I am not lecturing. I okay. am reminding, just as we all asked to be reminded at the beginning, okay. that if any of us needs starts drifting outside of the norms, that we will give a gentle reminder. So one of your fellow board members gave you a gentle reminder and so when that happens, regardless okay, of so whether you know or not, regardless of I'm whether gonna, or not you I'm gonna feel interrupt like you're doing you. that. I'm gonna interrupt you, you because may. you're not you a board may. member. I am and not I'm gonna a board start member. reading the, But what I'm gonna say the, is this, the, this the shows me that board. we need to take a breather. So I think what we should do is just take a moment. All right, let's all take a moment. Because if someone has to remind someone else of the norms, regardless of where that comes from or who's making that reminder, it, it, it shows me that we all just need to take a breather. So that's that we not can, true. That's not when, what the Arizona revised statutes say. Hear, they don't, they don't say anything about a breather and they don't so, say anything about governing let's board take norms a breather. either. We, One we of them can. is the law, the state of I, Arizona. I understand what the law is. The law is. that you're violating right now. And I don't know why you're interrupting I, because I am, it says I, that- I, I'm not sense. violating any, any laws during the study session. It tells me right now that we need to take a breather. So that's what I'm asking for. And okay, who are you? That's not violating any. I'm an elected system. board member. You're someone so got paid to come in here. Let's, take Jeremy. A we're going to take a break right now. I'm adjourning right. the, the minute, the break. meeting for two let's minutes. We'll come back we'll in just a, a moment. Break. Sounds good.
So we've noted the sort of the risk of misinterpretation. We've gotten that down as a concern. We want to make sure that we've heard from every single board member um, before we kind of go back to, a, to the original board member. So are there any other concerns that we haven't addressed yet? My greatest concern uh, with the equity statement is that if we go forth with it um, and there's no community input or collaboration, that it will continue to cause division as it has been. So your concern is that we need to have community input when, when creating an equity statement. And it sounds like perhaps up to this point, there hasn't been enough from your perspective. Is that right? I agree. That's great. We're in agreement. <laughs> One other thing I would like to add to that too is the fact that I my my concern with the equity statement is that there there hasn't been any insight or explaining on what equity is. So there's all these different perceptions of what equity is, and because of that lack of community input and, and collaboration, that's why we are where we are. So needing to first explain, educate, talk, listen, whatever that is, and then move forward. So it sounds like it's it's around the process for you more than having an equity statement at all. It's around having a process that provides for community engagement, but also an opportunity to come to consensus and understand what is meant by equity and what the district means by equity or what the other terms would be in that statement. Yes, I just wanna make sure I'm, gather, I'm capturing accurately. Yeah, sure. Um, another a concern for me is just simply disagreement with the content. There are people who fundamentally disagree with evening the playing field. And I wanna make sure I understand that concern is you don't uh, feel like that there is consensus in the community around having an equity statement or you're concerned about a specific group of people. I, I'm just trying to understand. Um, my concern is that in the community in general, mm -hmm. there are people who do not support an even playing field. Uh, right. So yeah, I guess I don't know another way to, to say that. Um, yeah, just differences of opinions. I mean, because because some of it, although we have tried to base our actions on data, mm -hmm. There are still opinions and um, you know history and all that, which I think Dr. Armstead's trying to address with the explanation and the education piece um, of that. But I think even in the end, there will still be some who do not support this work. Okay. What other concerns do people have about the about having an equity statement at all? Taxpayers are paying taxes out of their hard earned money to have kids educated. This equity has nothing to do with educating. So it's coming back to that. You think it's completely unnecessary? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, it's worse than not necessary. It's, it's counterproductive. It's a distraction from limited resources. So you feel like it's counterproductive and taking away from limited resources? 100%. Okay, and distraction, okay. A concern of mine is that it is perceived that this is political. Okay. So if the board were to support an equity statement, then you feel like it would be perceived politically, if that's your concern, or it could be perceived politically. A 
would go further. It is political. It's a hundred percent. This is a so extreme I'm gonna let her, radical. I'm gonna let her finish her thought. I'll let her finish. I'm, Absolutely. And then I'm gonna and then I I'm gonna come back to you. Yep. I'm sorry. In all honesty, it's a concern. Edit like it's a concern of mine either way. By doing it, there are people that perceive that it is political. If we were to not do it, people will perceive that as political pressure. Now. Sorry, I apologize for jumping in. I'm kind of agreeing with you, Melissa, a little bit. Um, it is, it's very extreme radical left wing and the general public of all political spectrum other than the radical left are not for this. They, they see that kids need, schools are failing in terms of education. When I went to school, we were the best in the world. Now we're 35th in the world or we're whatever. And people, businesses, high tech businesses, they can't even hire Americans anymore. It doesn't matter how many PhDs and how many whatever they have. They just simply do not have the rigorous education that we once did in this country. And that breaks people's hearts. It breaks everybody's heart, whether they're uh, whether they have kids, whether their kids have, have grown up and they've got grandkids, whether they're just people that are worried about the future of our beautiful, great country that's given more opportunity to every person of every race, color, creed than any other place in the world and seeing it being diluted and going downhill. And that's what's missing in education is probably one of the biggest failures of our culture right now. So, so what I'm hearing you say is not only is it unnecessary, it's divisive and it's taking us away from what we need to be focusing on, which is really on these specific skill sets. Do I have it right? I think you do, yes. Okay. Thank you. Got it. One of my last concerns, but probably is a higher concern, is that um, if we go forth with an equity statement, it is believed to only be focused on race. Equity is not just ethnicity. And so that is one of my greatest concerns that if there isn't that communication, collaboration, education, whatever you wanna call it with the community, the thought is that this equity statement equates to race and it's not. So, that lack of understanding, um, you feel like there is a lack of understanding that about equity and race. That, it, that, it's, only race. that it's only race. What other concerns?
Is there anything that I still can see? So I think some of the concerns um, sort of to bleed in some, to some of the questions. And so what we want to think about are, what do we still feel like we need to know as a board in order to be able to make a decision about this, whether or not we should have an equity statement? And some of the things that I heard were around community input and education in the community about what this means. And so it sounds like there are some questions around whether or not that still needs to be done or what needs to be done in order to kind of do some of those things. I'm seeing that you have a question. Well, I just was um, thinking about when we got down to some of the nitty gritty items there, but I was just sitting there thinking why, why, why I got on the school board and walked around, knocked on a thousand doors and 115, I'm 73 years old and whatever. And, you know, I, I wish we could be talking about there, the science shows things that are holding us back. And, and, and there are solutions based in that. And there's information out there on, I just, wish we could be talking about what we can do, implement parental involvement. Every study shows that, that with all things being equal, that's the main lever that we have. But every teacher will tell you that it's a brick wall. It's very hard to deal with. I, I don't like to look at problems, you know. I like to look at solutions, you know, that's the way I've done my life. I mean, there's always a problem. There's always 10 million people give you 10 million reasons why you can't do something. But, you know, you don't have to listen to them. And, and you know, there's a big guy up there and, you know, you just have to listen and, and think and, and God gave us or whoever, if you're an atheist, whatever, we got this brain, a computer, and you let it work on it and you start figuring out solutions. I think we can break the barrier with parents because I know virtually every mother wants the best for her kids. She may not know how, she may not have a clue what it is, she may not have a clue, and we can't solve parents' problems. But we can give them some information that maybe they could not perpetuate their own problems to their kids. And that, this, is, this is something that we've kind of decided that there's this line between the school and between the family. Says who? Okay. I mean, so we, we, have, we have parents, so I'm just, okay, I'll, I'll wrap it up my little soapbox, but all I'm just saying is that I wish we could be talking about something positive about whether or not something that really is sort of off in the weeds, we should be doing it and whatever. So that. So I think it comes back to your sort of perception um, around implementation, but your perception that it's unnecessary and it's taking us away from other things. But I guess what other questions do people have around whether or not we should have an equity statement? So coming coming back to that. I did record your question. What does science show? What are we seeing? Thank you. Yeah, I definitely think solutions are, are the backbone to why this work began um, in our district last year. When we, uh, when our nation obviously was, were faced with many issues um, and systemic racism was one of them, we decided to um, look at our data. And when we looked at the data, if we had seen no disparities, no differences between gender or race, or grades or different schools in our district, then we wouldn't need to continue the conversation, but we need to continue the conversation 
because the data that we saw indicates issues that we don't have the answers to. We don't know why those issues are there, but we would like to find a solution <coughs> to why those issues are there and why those disparities exist. So you want to learn more about why we're seeing this, these discrepancies in the numbers on a district-wide level. And that's pretty important into deciding whether or not we need an equity statement. Got it. So I reported talking about being shown level of the Why are the issues here and right? Um, I have a few questions. Um, the first one is, I think we need to figure out what does the community need to feel heard in relation to this equity statement? Um, and not only just to feel heard, but feel like they are part of the process because we are serving the community. Um, my second question is, is there a way to survey teachers, families, and students before finalizing and moving forward in relation to this, um, getting some type of survey results back from teachers and families where they don't have to include their name and in, in, in that information, but to see where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, another question I have is what, what area of equity are we as the district trying to change? Are we looking at it as an institutional um, situation as a personal situation, meaning we want the teachers to be more empathetic in the classroom. Um, institutional meaning, are we trying to change policies and, and those types of things, or is it instructional? Um, because depending on what part of um, equity we're trying to change, that's going to get a different response from the community. Um, if it's trying to change curriculum, if it's trying to change policies, or if it's building more empathetic teachers that makes it a different type of situation. Um, my next question is, are we looking to build this equity as part of the culture or are we trying to change the entire culture of the district? Because again, if we are trying to change a piece of the culture to make it a better district, that's different than portraying it as we're gonna just flip this and change the entire culture of the district. And then lastly, what type of data can we gather that is not just equity related to race? Because the data that we have looked at, we see those differences, we see them as concerns, but that is also why this discussion has led only to race. And I, obviously you guys see I'm a black woman, but I don't believe that this equity and in light of everything on in this society should be specific to race. We have the issues in the country, but we cannot move children further and stronger if we tell them that the only issues we have are race related. That does not need to be the basis of the equity statement. Agree. So, go ahead. I think that Tara hit it, Dr. Armstead hit it on the head with the last item about race, particularly with, I don't think race has anything to do with much of anything actually. 
And that's the problem with the equity thing. Now, one of the things that was the main reason for adopting this that was presented by Ms. Moran was that there is disparity in discipline. And that was the, the, the big, that was the one that everybody, you know, hung their coat on or their hat on or whatever. But that, the fact of the matter is, and so the solution was to say, well, we need to reduce the disparity in discipline. Well, maybe we need to increase the disparity. If, if kids are misbehaving, maybe they need more discipline. I don't know, but to sit there and say, oh, we don't, if, if, if people, you know, right now I'd say kids are pretty, they're different than they were when I grew up. And, you know, discipline is a good thing. I mean, I, I think every, adults all just every day go, wow, I wish I had more discipline and stop eating or whatever, you know, so to sit and go, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times by actually having more discipline, it, everybody that has kids, you, you end up not having to give it in the future because you deal with it. And so th that's one of the things that just was like, to me, atrocious about this whole equity thing and the way it was sold and all that kind of stuff because it's 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 absurd. It just doesn't even fit common so sense. Is your so, question that you don't know what the data means? Like we don't necessarily know what the data is telling us. So, for example, you cited the difference in discipline numbers, and you're saying I don't know what that means. I see there's a difference, but I don't know that 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 doesn't tell me that it necessarily needs. To no, be I, I I didn't say that I don't know what it means. I think I think everybody knows what it means, but the solution that was offered is absurd. Was absurd with the, with the equity thing, and that's the problem with with adopting stuff with all these sort of touchy feely pseudoscience solutions rather than saying this student's misbehaving we got to stop it and at some point you sit and say hey we need to stop that and and uh, so that the rest of the class can go on and 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 if that student learns they to make good choices after that good if they don't learn to make good choices oh well you know that's something else for another day so And then, and then I hear you talking again about solutions. Part of what I'm trying to get out of your question is does our data support this solution? So that's your question. Is Define your this. What, what's so this? Something that, that, and that means that, that might not be possible. Well, I know you are. Right. The right solution for the data that we need for Well, we want to explore these science here and, and based on this piece here, gathering the data, we want to really try to make it sort of make sure that we are trying to make the right solution. I'm not, no, I don't think you got it really no. characterized right. First off, I'm agreeing with Dr. Armstead that, it, that the discipline thing to sit and say, oh, there's a disparity, like they were saying of a reason for adopting this, I, I don't, I think is just a non, it doesn't make any sense. That, that should not be the issue. Whether a kid is, uh, uh, there's a discipline problem should have nothing to do with race. Okay, as far as a solution for it, I'm not sure that it's this, the school certainly should do the best to mitigate, you know, discipline problems, but I'm not sure that the school needs to be focusing on, they're not parents, they're not, you know, this is this is not, uh, you know, reform school or something like that. It, hopefully, it should be more educational school. And I want to talk about the concerns of children's behavior and making sure that they are not appropriately being schooled. Otherwise, they're going to be in a too active way and conditions. I think, you know, no, you are well, yes, you are wrong about that. The discipline is is it yes, yes. I mean, yeah, I have some more clarifications I could provide to Mr. Honak. Um when we indicated, not even we, when the district 
took the equity statement and indicated that they wanted to reduce disparities in discipline. Um, they didn't say, we don't know exactly how they plan to do that. That wasn't to say that people would be, that students would be less disciplined or that there would be some sort of disciplined quota. Um, that's one of the misinterpretations that has been um, part of, of this work. So I would just say that to that. I have some other questions I'd like to add um, to the question area. Well, wait a minute. That, on top what you of, just hold on a second. I got a comment because what you said is is the opposite of what was presented by Superintendent Gutting with quotas, and we're going to reduce the discipline by this having amount a goal or number does not mean a quota. You gave numbers. You Setting gave numbers. a goal a does quota. not mean a quota. No, those are two different things. Okay, so. I agree with, um, or I like the idea of, can we survey teachers, students, families to see where they're at? I would like to add a separate um, kind of nuance to that, which is, are the people who are most impacted by these disparities being included into the discussions and the decisions? And part of that for me, I agree with Dr. Armstead again on the race issue that there's also some um, economic issues. We have Title I schools in our district and there is a clear disparity in Title I versus our non-Title I schools. That was evidenced to us this year through our technology disparities um, with COVID as well as um, achievement. Another question, I'll wait for you to catch up, I guess on the writing. Another question would be just to the board in general um, and to the district administration, do we need to examine the structures in place such as funding, teacher placement and student placement in classrooms as part of equity? The student placement, teacher placement, and there was one other. Um, funding. funding. Yeah, student placement for me would mean um, which students are in which classrooms at a particular school. Teacher placement to me would mean equitable experience levels um, at each school. Another question would be to the board in general, again, would we be better off to potentially revamp the strategic plan to encompass equity and equity lens? When we created the strategic plan, which we do still have a couple of years left on that before we would potentially be in the timeline to revamp that. Although some of the goals that we have um, do marry nicely with um, an equity lens, I think there would be other layers that we could add to that um, that would embed equity, inclusion, and belonging into all levels of the school. So in addition to or in place of an equity statement, would it be better to incorporate it into the strategic plan is the question. Yes, and I think um, that's something that would naturally happen the next time that we were to revamp the strategic plan, but because we got a lot of community feedback um, from all different kinds of sources during the strategic plan process, I think that's a great model to also be able to marry in this equity work at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was very successful. That, that process was very successful for us. Um, my other question would be, if we decide to move forward with, with an equity statement, should we include what success would look like? And should we include what happens if we don't succeed with equity work? Would we be better off 
that the inclusion is run through our design. What would success look like when we're talking about this? And what do we teach these children? Um, my question would be what, what learning uh, what, what what learning, um, professional development, training, or things are needed so that we can ensure a, a productive and successful implementation. And you could add resources. more. So your question is around if we have one, what are we going to sort of support that with what learning or professional development or other would be required in order to make sure that we're implementing it with the vision of the board. So questions? my question would be, how are we going to accurately get information out to the community about what we're doing? Because clearly we have seen a lot of inaccurate information get out now, and we want to make sure that we don't have that continue. And I agree with Dr. Armstead about the race thing. For me, that's, that's not ever what it's been about. I think I've been really clear when we've talked about this. For me, it's about kids with autism, it's about kids that come from different homes. They don't, not every family is a mom, dad, and two kids, and everything looks different. So I think it's important. So I agree, it's not, to me, that's not what it's about. That's never what it's been about. So when Mr. Honak says like, we're just focused on race, I was on the board when we approved it. And that was not what it was about for me. Last question I have was, what does equity look like on the administrative level? Um, administrative level. <laughs> All right. What does equity look like? Okay, so we're going to pause for just one moment, this is right here. Um, we've compiled the questions that we think we need to ask and better understand in this term how we would refer to her. I think we're going to ask how we would refer to her for us to figure out any feedback that we have from the community. Thank you, Madam President, members of the governing board. We included for you the community chat comments um, that we were able to obtain during our community chat times. We have um, had 26 people participate. We had one April 8th, the 15th, and the 21st. Um, and then this week we have one on the 27th, which um, we have 15 people signed up. And we'll continue to have um, additional chat times every week until May 20th. Um, the community chat times were very structured um, and very systematic. We rolled out um, data, um, we took in feedback, um, and then we also shared that if they had any feedback directly related to the equity statement, we would bring that back to you all. Um, and they could leave that in either um, conversation when they were giving feedback regarding the work in general and or the ticket out the door if they had specific feedback. Um, so that's what you're seeing in front of you um, today. Did everyone find it in their packet? It was just behind the equity statement.
before we move on, if you guys don't mind, I have a question for Superintendent Denning. Um, I, I, I have not attended the chats. I don't believe any other board members have um, purposefully just so that we can get some you know, dialogue going with the community um, and the district administration. So can you give us a little bit of understanding of the format, how these were collected? Um, is it question and answer? Is it, you know, how, how, how are these collected and then how do we separate them? I see some of the comments are about the goals and some of like the operational part of the equity statement. Uh, excuse me, the transformational equity work document, um, which is not the same as the equity statement. So I just want to make sure we're separating out, right? What is the equity statement and what is the other part? Because we're not addressing the goals and such tonight. We're just addressing the equity statement itself. So can you kind of talk about what, what that presentation was and how people were given that information? So um, Sorry. so how the, the day would transpire is we um, opened it up and reviewing our strategic plan. Then we went into kind of where we were at this moment with um, the work. Um, and then we uh, presented the data um, that we were looking at where we saw some disparities and just kind of had them review the data and see if there was any ahas. Um, we utilized our Kagan strategies so that we gave opportunity for every person to speak um, in those meetings. And then we invited one of our administrative assistants to be there present to take notes so that we weren't just relying on us to try to remember to jot things down. Um, then in relation to that, um, folks could you know, leave a little comment on a post-it that we could add to the different um, goals. So we went back over the goals to see if they had suggestions, ideas, or comments. If they were just in general comment spoke, um, like you'll see on one of those, it looks like they're embedded, like they intertwine both pieces. Um, then we included that to you as well. If it wasn't able to like determine that, okay, this, this piece is this and this piece is that. Then the final piece is on the, their way out the door, they could add any additional comments um, or feedback that they would like to give as a ticket out the door. And that what they would do in writing um, on a little slip of paper. And then um, the administrative assistant would type that up. And so that's kind of where you see. Okay, Was there you. any, um, with the people that were participating, was did they understand what the that there was a diversity empowerment committee that was pretty much controlling the implementation of the equity statement in the school district, or were they even aware of the transformational equity work procedure manual? Whether you know. I mean, people were definitely aware of all the work that transpired and we kind of caught them up to date on exactly the history um, of, of what did transpire. But I will say that one thing that, that was noticeable of, of these, and, and I think you can kind of tell by having just one page of, of specific feedback in relation to the equity work was that there's only been 26 so far participate um, when we have enough seats for 15 each time um, so that the participation wasn't quite as high as we had anticipated. Um, we do have people coming back multiple times because they're excited and want to continue to learn because they need, learn something new every time that they attend. Um, but we wanted to make sure that um, it was uh, productive conversations. And so we wanted to make sure that we had the protocols in place. So very similar to how um, they're doing tonight, like would turn in something and, and like you would read it. So it's another person kind of reading the comments of those pieces, so. Well, I'm just a little concerned that the feedback was from people that really weren't aware of what, what how the equity statement, you know, the child of the equity statement. I mean, let's, you know, uh, was implemented and actually even what it said. And, and one, of the, one of the real problems is this diversity empowerment committee is unelected, unaccountable. The public knows nothing about it, yet they're running around deciding, defining equity, you know, and how teachers and in hiring and whatever. Well, that's what the, uh, that's what the transformational, uh, equity work 
you know, spells out in detail over 10 pages, and I'm sure many thousands of dollars have been spent, you know, implementing it so far with, you know, well, time is money, you know, and there's how many different, there's four committees, or I don't know how many, and each one with a lot of people, there's a, a lot that transpired. I mean, when I first heard about it, I didn't even know what it was about in on a meeting. And I thought, you know, Megan was explaining uh, how all this stuff, and I, I'm a newbie and I, I want to get along. And I just went, wow, that's, uh, you did a good job. I had no idea what it was about, really. But certainly it looked like a lot of effort and it, it was had, had accomplished in a very short period of time. Again, it's it's time, it's resources, you know, that are being used for what? The Diversity um, Empowerment Committee, oh, I'm sorry, the Diversity Empowerment Committee consists of volunteers. No one is paid to be there. But they're controlling, it's not, it's not who they are, it's that they're controlling all the, all a lot of employees in the district and administrators. May, may I respond to that for just a moment? Um, I think what's really important, and I'm, I'm not um, citing your concerns about the equity work document. Um, I think there are concerns that need to be addressed and that is something that needs to happen with Jody and her district staff. Um, our job here as the governing board is to, if we choose to, um, develop an equity statement that governs the district and provides a vision for what that is. The implementation is the job of Jody and her staff. And so these are two different things. I think there's there's concerns and I, I want them all to be addressed. But I think tonight what we should be addressing is the equity statement. And none of that, none of those goals or implementation can really go anywhere if we can't agree and build consensus here that the statement is what what is actually governing that work. Well that's that's not true. It's just plain not true. They're they're inseparably intertwined. The, the, the transformational equity work and all of that could have never happened because the superintendent and the school district never would have had the authority to do any of that stuff were it not for the equity statement. So you can't just sit here and look and say, oh, well, the equity statement and that's all we're going to talk about because it has consequences. And the consequences are, is it gives not only direction, but it gives permission and even a mandate to the superintendent and the district that this is what you guys are supposed to be doing. So to sit here and say, oh, well, we're only gonna talk about one. No, we need to talk about them all. I have a, I have a solution. We, we, I think we all have decided that the equity statement, the way it is right now, if I, unless I'm missing something, we all agree that it's deficient. It's not. That so, has not been agreed on. I thought we're talking about modifying it and the whole purpose of what we're talking about. We here. haven't gotten to that point yet. We're, we're making that decision right now. We're not all in agreement okay. that the statement is deficient. Well, can I make a comment on it? If that's what we're doing, we're, we're going to be doing. I think right now, what we need to do is put it on the agenda and rescind this. Then we can sit and do committees and go talk to the public and have meetings and get input and come up with maybe another something else. But I think that if we all agree that we're changing or maybe gonna do it or maybe not, or maybe it's gonna be purple, pink, blue or whatever. But in the meantime, we know this one isn't good, bye-bye. We need to, we should just get rid of it. I want it on the agenda. If I make a motion to put it on the agenda or whatever. I don't know how all that works. You guys are the experts. It should be on the next meeting. And let's just make a vote on this. And then we can sit 
because we're forcing the issue that somehow we have to hold on to this and we've got to go modify or kumbaya and all come together with a new flavor, but that's not the way you do things. I think that's what we're all talking about. I, this was, I think it's everybody because let's just do, well, wait a minute, but let's just do a reality check of what's going on. This was passed on December 8th. Why is it on the agenda? Why are we here? Why are you guys coming uh, here? It's on the agenda because I asked for it to be on the agenda. We, we last passed time it. We so, so, excuse me. So, we passed it. So, if the fact that we're just sitting here re, let, re litigating it is, I think, a pretty good sign that it's, it's, we're second guessing it. I'm done. So, I do not support removing the equity statement. I do support possibly discussing changes, but not removing what we have until we have something better in place. Um, going back to your original question about the, the questions and how we answer those questions and then what that means, at least right now in the interim moving forward. Um, I agree with Melissa that um, we should not rescind the statement as it stands today but instead set a strategy to answer the questions, receive additional feedback and uh, determine at some point what those modifications may be. Um, I would just emphasize the last sentence of the equity statement that was adopted by the governing board that states this document will be updated periodically and expanded as needed. So I would agree with board members Zydema and Clymer in that updates and expansion of this document are potentially in order depending on the answers of the question and depending on the consensus of our current board that is in place. I do not agree with completely getting rid of the statement, but I do believe that we should not do anything else until these questions have been answered that we have. Most of those questions up here are in regards to the community, which means the community needs to be given the opportunity to have a voice. Um, I continue to emphasize the fact that them not having a voice is how we reach this. Um, as far as the, the document or the statement itself, I am under the impression that if there's more connection with the community, there's more understanding of what equity is from the administrative level all the way down to the individual classroom, then that's when we can look at doing things through this document, also with data. Um, because right now, as we stand here, the data or the basis of this statement is off of race. But if the basis off this statement is off of not just ethnicity, but home structure and neurological concerns that students have, then it would be more, it would, it would be more representative of what is already being done in the district, but now put on paper. So I don't, I don't think that we should even be talking about updating and modification until we give the community more of a chance to get involved. I have a, a further comment and a little bit of a question. I read, uh, got from uh, the article that was in the, the uh, Arizona Republic or whatever says there were scrapping or abandoning or I don't know what it said, but 
from what I understand, the transformational equity work is is no longer a thing. It's not. It, it's it's being dropped, or that's okay. Well, I've I've heard from teachers that, that have said that that's what has been presented. I read that in the uh, article that I was given by uh, by uh, Ms. Potapov that uh, in the in in it. But the point of it is is that it, it's in flux, uh, and uh, and if so, by leaving the equity statement in place until we go figure out what to do is still leaving this authority for something which I'm not sure that uh, there's a there's definitely a lot of ambiguity in terms of information that's that as to how it's being implemented right now is it is it going to be is it going to be put on hold as Dr. Armstead said maybe it should be until we move on or so so there's a there's a real operational question here it's kind of ambiguous Ms. Moran says oh there's it's not dropped every everybody else is saying it is there's there's a lot of input and and I honestly there's a lot of teachers that that contact me they're afraid to talk to anybody you know, and they've they've said there were meetings with Mr. Scudder and whatever, and they were they were saying it's it's nullified. You know, the transformational equity work. The problem is, you know, you can get any answer you want, depending on how you ask the question. If you're going to go talk to the community, you need to say, pick one of these two. The, the district focus on better education for all students or do equity, whatever the heck that means. That's what the question should be out to the community, not whether you like equity or not. It's, So what we're doing, wow. what we're doing at the district level is we're reviewing the goals that were set in each of the areas and we're gaining community input to see if any of the goals need to be revised or reworked. Um, with that process, we're doing community chat times every week. And then from there, we'll also um, circle back to our subcommittees because we want to make sure that we get input from there, as well as um, some parent groups. 
um, as well as in the final setting, getting community input as a whole in some form of like a survey or feedback place that would go out to every single um, you know, family in our, in our community to get that final kind of input and guidance. From there, then we can take the next step forward in, in the work that we're doing. And um, as well as looking at what experts can we bring in to go alongside of us because this is all new to us as well. And we're definitely not the experts in this arena and we wanna make sure that we, we do it and we do it well. Still agreeing, it just at some okay. point, if we could take a two, three minute break, would be, would be cool. We're, we're gonna wrap up here. We yeah. were told that we were, that we were 80 to 30, it didn't have to have a Yeah. So, um, what we heard, we didn't have to talk to you about the next time. Um, let's see, let's, let's take a break. Yeah, just two minutes would be good. Yep, yeah, great. Sounds good.
I help do the questions. I was going to say develop the questions, but it that's no longer an option. Is there another area? Because I'm I'm not. Never mind. I want to say it. Um. Yes, we we can help you work through that. But yes, not not, not exactly that. But yes, something like that. So we can, well, we can have multiple sessions. Yes. Okay. I'm not. I'm not necessarily. Maybe I'll clarify what I mean. I'm not saying designing the questions. When I'm looking at these questions, we already have them up there. I'm looking at maybe we need to decide on which of these questions are district level, community level, and then individual teacher questions given to those individuals, rather than just coming up with new questions. Can I volunteer to help design the process also, or is that too much volunteering for one person? Kim, how would you like to be involved? I just said, Kim, how would you like to be involved? I'll help with either side, wherever is needed. Good, absolutely. Um, good. I think we've made a lot of progress. Um, I think in terms of timing, um, I'm not sure that we can lay out that entire timing this evening, but um, I will say, just kind of remind what Superintendent Gunning said earlier about we still have some remaining community chat sessions throughout the month of May. 
So my suggestion would be that we sort of separate and do our part in terms of designing the process and developing the questions in our sort of subgroups here um, throughout the month of May so that we have the opportunity for those to continue. Um, I'm not sure what that um, inflection point will be to decide when we are ready, but I would suggest the, the very first opportunity for us to even come back together as a group and discuss it would be in the June, in our June meeting. Um, I don't know that date off the top of my head, but we can figure that out. Um, might be best to schedule another study session instead of a regular meeting because we do have a lot on our regular agendas. So scheduling that in June might be the best opportunity, but I'm open to feedback. Well, I, I'm, I... Correct. Correct. Well, we do have one in June, but scheduling it in that same agenda potentially. We do. And I just sort of a technical question because I because I was thinking that when you were saying there would be two people on each, then it's not a quorum, which means that they could just meet Zoom or whatever sure. with no no issue. But now we're all of a sudden we're almost like a quorum on on each of these things. So is that like, defeating? Yeah. That's is that going against? Do you know what we're talking about with the quorum thing? Because I think that's why. Yeah, because I thought that's what you were getting at. Is it could be a little more free conversation, and then all of a sudden we got the whole. You know, we got the whole board. Mm -hmm. Well, that but there could be a chain uh, violation yeah. of the open that's meeting true. now. That's fine by me. Jeremy, which one Which one is more um, a priority to you, for you to be involved in? So pick one of those so that then we can, because there's five I, of us, one well, person. Well, the first one me. I picked is, is develop the cues. Okay. And I think the cues are the questions. Okay. Yeah, I'll work with Jeremy on the questions, sure. And I will also say that we do have a board retreat at the end of June. We might not want to wait that long, but we do have a day scheduled um, that we'd be able to do some real work. Yes, as well. you are correct. Okay, so there, there may be two different opportunities in June already scheduled that are on our calendars that we would have the opportunity to bring this back. So the so the bottom line is it's 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 uh, Ms. Moran and me on the questions and Clamor and Armstead on the thing. Okay, and just is this would this be like little Zoom meetings or something? Jim, is that what you think? Oh, correct. Um, potentially, I, I don't. I don't want to sign you up for something that you don't want to do. But potentially, um, it might be a good idea if you wanted to work with Superintendent Gunning on the delivery at the meeting and potentially how we're going to come back together and present this, um, whether that's with facilitators or whatever that might be. So maybe there's some work there in, in timing when we're going to bring it back, how it's going to be. Um, facilitated and all of that kind of stuff. Does that work for you? Okay. I'm sorry I volunteered told you, but that's what happens when you that's right. That, that's what happens. Okay. So that's one Okay, I have a big picture question. When you I just want to clarify to make sure everyone's on the same page of what process we are designing, I want to define that, and what questions we are developing. What is the purpose of both of those?
making them work for the purposes of this process and also considering how much that is going to be talked about. So to that, I'll go out to the first one. So that is the question. For the public. For the public. That's yeah. the that's what we're talking For about is going out to the public. Okay, yeah. So, so would it be correct to say that that uh, that um, Kimberly Moran and myself will develop questions, and Daniel Clymer and Dr. Tara Armstead will do some design, and then after that, we'll come together as a as a as a group and and put it all together or something like that. The next step. Okay. And to further clarify, we're developing questions based on these questions that we, as a board have said we need answers to. Thank you. So this is not the questions we're sending out to families and our teachers. That's not what we mean right now. That is not what we mean right now. What we mean is this is the basic question of the starting prompt that we're teaching. But it has an asking. Now, when we say public, that's what we mean. Are we talking about And can we, could I suggest that maybe they just be broken down into categories? I mean, some of those questions are for the board. Some of those are for the district administration. Some of those are in fact for families, you know, public community, things like that. So as we break them down, those questions can be developed for the public and go through that process. The other ones can then just be brought back to the specific people that would be able to answer them or it would be appropriate to do that. Great, and that's exactly Okay. I just think that we're the questions we're supposed to be asking is the public. We're not we're not asking the teachers whether they want to raise. I mean, but you know, it's the teachers should have they don't have a voice in this, honestly. True. Have sorry, we are doing the same thing microphone uh switch here so yes it needs to be weighted i mean it needs to be weighted the teachers are a certain percentage of the public and then that's what it should be because it's easy to go send out an email in two seconds to 900 teachers or 600 sure. teachers but the public's harder you know that's, point. that's a point well taken so we'll make sure when we're designing the process that we're putting thought into all of those pieces Other questions? Other questions or points of clarification? Um, one just sort of point of order clarification so that we're, because we're talking about this timing. Um, Jeremy, earlier in the meeting, you requested that on the next agenda for our regular governing board meeting, that we would put the equity statement on the agenda and discuss it again. Are you comfortable with leaving it off the May agenda, potentially putting it on either the June agenda or um, you know, the study session board retreat, wherever we find the most appropriate place in June to do that. Um, I, I wanna ask that to you. And then also as a consensus of the board, do you want to bring this back in May when we just assign the timeline of June? I'll let you answer first. So I think the real issue is that what happens in the meantime so if we put it till June, what happens with the 
Diversity Empowerment Committee and what happens with all the equity work. Is that still gonna go on? I don't think it should when we're sitting here deciding what to do with the equity, it's not. So if it's gonna go on like it is, then then we're, you know, it's it's to the people that want it to their advantage to postpone it till 2027. If it's, if it's you know, uh, it, but it, but uh, you know we're if it is going to go on then then we sh we need to deal with this quickly because the more it's going on the more it gets entrenched and all that kind of thing so that's okay. that um, we don't really have a definitive answer on what what is going well, on. well I, I think I think we did have a definitive answer and I'll let everyone answer is in the consensus up here I don't see where that is oh, over here in the temperature check. Um, it looks to me that the consensus is to keep and do something else. So my interpretation of that, and I'm opening that up, is that we keep the equity statement that is in place until the June meeting when we come back in the process and the questions have been designed and developed. And then we take a next step at that point, not to come back in two weeks to take a next step before we've actually done the work. Well, I'm not talking about the equity statement. I'm talking about what is going on in the school system about its implementation, which is which is again, I'm still just as ambiguous. It's just as ambiguous to me as it was. I don't know whether there's the diversity empowerment committees running around and all these committees and they're instituting all these changes in the transformational equity work manual, or are they reduced it to just four goals or what? I'm, not, I'm okay. very unclear. Okay. All right. And I don't think that should said. continue. Um, in my personal opinion, May is next week. So there's no way just getting to this point that we can get anything done efficiently. So I think that it is best to wait until June. Um, but to Jeremy's point, once we get, while we're doing this, everyone else is at the same standstill. No one else is going forward with anything until these questions are answered and we, we know the process of getting these questions answered. So unless I'm, I'm not understanding it, this equity statement that's currently out there is being seen as this is just the, our starting point. Right now, this is nothing final until we get this work done. And if we come back in June and it's, and it's not done, then everyone's still going to wait until we come together collectively. But Megan Duplain, Megan Duplain came out and did, oh, we're doing this and this and this and this. Is that going to be continuing until or or not? Is it being well sus suspended or as what? a board member, we put the policies in place and it is up to Superintendent Gunning and her administration to do the actual work of the district. So my uh, I agree that May is next week and uh any time you're implementing change in this district, whether that was the strategic plan or conscious discipline, this is going to take time. So I'm in no rush to get to the next phase of this because we could get to June and still have unanswered questions. This may be until July, this may be until August. I don't want to rush this. I want to get this right and get all of the input that we need um, in order to make it the most effective and productive step forward that we can and so i'm not interested in rushing the process myself but we're, it, that's not the question the question is whether we rush it or whether we take our time as you're suggesting that's the question I'm asking is what is going on in the administration in the meantime? Jeremy, just like I shared before, what we are working on right now are the goals. That's what we're doing in the community chats. We have to solidify our goals and have that clarity and understanding and, and community input. And we have a lot of people that we still need to talk to. Okay, so you're basically you. not implementing a lot. You're, you're, you're fact finding as opposed to that's that's all I wanted to know. Okay. Thank so you. It sounds like we're all going to be fact finding, whether it's on a specific district level or on the school board level. I know I, I don't have a mic, <laughs> so I don't know if they can pick me up. 
Um, so it, it sounds like that we're, we're all going to do the work of fact finding right now. The implementation is not occurring. This is our interim time right now, whether that's June or when have you, to really do this fact finding, go out to the community, hear what our community tells us in order for us to be able to move forward and figure out what is best as a school board for us to move forward with. I'm seeing head nods. Okay. That's all we have then. We'll follow up with you with the notes from today's session with the action items that we've identified and follow up with you to kind of create the action in those next steps mm -hmm. as our sort of homework from this. Are there any other questions for us? Can we go home? <laughs> Let's all hope. Yeah. Right. Is, there, is there any other business for tonight? Uh, no, there's not. I just want to say thank you uh, very much to the board members, um, to you both, Colleen and Amanda. We really appreciate your help um, tonight in facilitating. Um, thank you to our community that came and listened and are part of this. We really appreciate you. Um, and one last thing, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our study session. I motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, we are adjourned. <laughs>